God in Jesus is a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Glory to God most high. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Wow. My God in Jesus is a wonderful God. A wonderful, wonderful, awesome, fantastic, amazing. Hallelujah. Glorious, awesome, magnificent God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heavens and the earth adore him. What an awesome God. Good morning, early risers. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God. And welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Hallelujah. This is truly the day that the Lord has made. And we must rejoice and be glad in it so that we can win it. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. As I open my eyes and see God's prize, I declare that because you have chosen to worship early in the morning, you are wise. Hallelujah. Gracious and wonderful blessings to each and every one of you as the Holy Spirit takes preeminence and dominance over the day as he led Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, into the wilderness to be tested. Hallelujah. So he must lead us into each day to be tested and tried so that we know God did not lie. Hallelujah. Jesus never lied. He prayed, He paid the price. He passed the test. And now because of that, we are the best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so glory be to the name of the Most High God, wonderful Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How great is our God. How great is his name. He is the greatest one forever the same. He rolled back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. And he says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. And so this morning we come to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, O King. Thank you that you are not just a part of our lives, but you are our everything. Your love reaches way down deep within. And Father, it passes all our human understanding. And there will always be a worship, a glorious worship, a praise unto you we sing. Lord, words alone just can't express our heart's desire. Our gratitude for one more day, our needs you have supplied. Your warm embrace and your tenderness, your patience with us through all our mess. Today we say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have come to one conclusion. You are truly the best. And so we say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Highest praise to you, O King. Hallelujah to you, O King. You are great and you are almighty. All honor, all glory. Hallelujah. All grace, all praise, all worship to you, O King. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to you, Holy One of Israel. Hosanna, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hosanna to the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures in the fourth watch hour. Praise Him all creatures in the earth. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above heavenly hosts. Praise Him for He manifests to us as Father, as Son, and as Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As we welcome the Holy Spirit and give him full, full dominance, hallelujah, over every element and aspect of our lives. We say, Holy Spirit, we surrender to you. You are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere. For your glory, O Lord, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning to each and every one of you, my family. I love you all so much. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Minister Tanisha Shaw. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless each and every one of you on Instagram already, pi piling up on TikTok. Hallelujah. On Facebook, Inst um, YouTube. Yes, YouTube. Hallelujah. Arrows Internet Radio. 
we are getting ready to do a mighty work a mighty work a mighty work hallelujah there's so much to be done so much to be done god is faithful god is good god is kind hallelujah hallelujah sorry we don't have arrows radio this morning but god is awesome we will have them soon soon we're having a little issue uh downloading it's not the computer now we're having a little issue downloading the software to um to utilize and so just out of habit i've been saying arrows internet radio but um we're having a little issue downloading the software onto the new computer um in order to to get arrows back up but it will happen soon it is being worked on by our engineers in the background pastor noel and uh and, and pastor masha praise god hallelujah so it's truly an amazing day a great day a day that we see you now hallelujah and a day when god has seen us you know um guys just before we we we, we get into the serious matters of things i i watched a video or at least a part of a video uh a couple of days ago where a, a gentleman who has gone on to be with the lord uh, said that he was a baptist minister and he used to just minister he used to just pray and praise and worship and serve and do all of the things that a pastor is supposed to do i think um we've sent it i've sent it to a few people and i sent it to pastor marsh and she's been sending it to a few people just this morning as i signed on i saw a, a message from a friend of mine who is overseas a fourth watch family member as well and she said when she watched it she was like oh my goodness god help me uh it's 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 a situation where this this baptist pastor um was doing everything that so many of us do and so many leaders do so many pastors and apostles and prophets do and they're they're, they're doing this mighty work and he said the lord took him to heaven uh took him up and showed him showed him hell and showed him took him on a tour and then the lord said to him do you know that this is where you belong hell and he was like what no father that 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 cannot be hell certainly cannot be i am i am your son i am a child of god i am a christian i am a pastor i preach i teach i win souls for the kingdom i do all kinds of things that i am supposed to do i am committed to you i call on your name every day and he listed out a long list of things and it so remind me of the scripture that says in the last day many shall come and say lord lord did i not cast out devils in your name did i not heal the sick did i not raise the dead did i not win souls and he will say depart from me i never knew you you worker of iniquity it was such a real thing to see the bible come alive in such a real way through the mouth of a real human being in our real time not fictitious not um uh, suspicious uh, not the figment of someone's imagination as some people may say because it's only in the bible and we have never seen or had any literal testimony of anyone having that experience and he says the lord and he said that the lord said to him everything that you have been doing was not for me everything that you are doing I see it as nothing, as dumb, as crap. Nothing that you did was for my glory because you didn't do it for me. You did it for a false God. <coughs> Excuse me. You did it for another God. How many of us, myself included, some days. <coughs> Excuse me. One second. There are many days, many times when I'm worshiping and my worship feels empty. There are many days when I'm reading the word and my, 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 my time in the word feels empty. I feel like I'm just um, doing my chore, doing my duty. I want to make sure that I get in a little reading in the day and I want to make sure that I do a little prayer and I want to make sure I acknowledge God more out of of duty than relationship and you never know how day after day time after time 
you're doing what is right but what is right is not right in God's sight we're doing we're praying but we're saying some words with an intent to, to just complete a task and then move on to the things that are really important we're at church we're preaching the gospel we're singing on the choir we're singing we're leading praise and worship we're reading the word we're praying with everyone else and our minds are elsewhere we are not connected to God in the way that we should uh, and after a while it becomes a habit after a while it's difficult to break out of it because it has become the norm the things of the world the things of self the things that you have to do or oh, I have to get to work at a certain time I have these projects these assignments these uh, tasks to fulfill um, I have uh, I have to go find a, a little hustle to see how I can make some money how I can pay the bills this month and there are so many different legitimate authentic things that constantly plague our minds each day that God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has been eliminated from our minds and our our our, our worship, our praise, our uh, positioning has just become natural more than spiritual. I know maybe I'm the only person that that has happened to, and um, and and therefore I need you guys to pray for me. Please pray for me because I'm willing to admit. I'm willing to admit that there are times when before God, yes, there are times when I feel like God's sitting on my head. I feel like God is sitting literally on my head. There are times when I feel like, hey, if he doesn't come off, he's going to break my neck. Yes, there are times when that happened. But too many times I got to confess. And let me tell you something, guys. The greatest, the greatest mark of humility is a mark that says, I can confess that though people see me as anointed, as powerful, that I have had too many days when I know, not feel, know that I was not operating in that solid anointing of God. I was operating out of the gifts that God has given me. I was operating out of my knowledge of what I know people want to hear, but not what God wants to share. Amen. And so it's important hallelujah it's important that we constantly ask god to help us not to make us miss him because it's easy to miss god as you become a prayer warrior as you become proficient and efficient in praying you could miss god because he doesn't hear what you are saying as you become proficient in worship see what the lord has done i see it even on on, um, on the various social media pages people are, are are singing worship songs they're doing stuff and maybe it's touching someone else because they like that worship and they like that song and they like what's going on but the person who is bringing it across they are ministering to other persons as Paul said I must bring my body under subjection under the rulership of Jesus Christ under the consistent relational interaction with the Lord God Almighty through Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the Holy Ghost lest when I preach others in lest when I show others how to worship lest when I when I stir up the gifts that have been laid on laid it uh, that have been given to the laying on of hands in others lest when i cause others to receive the baptism of the holy ghost and fire lest when i see others baptized and filled and walking in the fullness of god uh, i myself become a castaway uh, we have to be sensitive guys not because and, and and satan has infiltrated the body of christ in a deeper way than we can imagine satan has infiltrated the body of christ in a deeper way than we can imagine he has infiltrated and has caused us to be lukewarm watered down we've become like 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 uh, uh, we jamaicans say um a, a, a cup of tea that is only hot it has a kind of flavor but it's watered down it's not the same for those of you who drink coffee just imagine a half a teaspoon of coffee in too much water it will have a smell of coffee but it tastes insipid it's hot because you want to accomplish that heat in your stomach but it tastes is insipid there's some of us 
Come on, people of God. I'm not trying to hurt or, or, or condemn or judge anyone. Y'all should know me by now. That's not what I'm about. But I'm saying to you that some of us are functioning, including myself. Come on. Hallelujah. I can't offend myself. I'm telling you there are too many days when in God's mouth I am like an insipid cup of coffee. Uh, we got to come to that place where we understand, where we know, where we believe, where we focus. Because the idol in our lives in a lot of instance is self. We are so into what we want. We're so into where we want to go. We're so interested in what we want to accomplish even for God that we miss what God wants us to accomplish for him. We miss what he really wants because we are trying to please ourselves and tell ourselves that it is him that we're trying to please. And sometimes I'm telling you it is so hard to see, so hard to recognize. You know why? Because the things we're doing, thinking that we're pleasing him, are things that are supposed to please him. That's what makes it difficult. So when we spend all day in the Bible, I know of someone who spends so much time in the Bible, so much time in the Bible. How could that be wrong? How could that not be a joy in God's sight? How? That's not possible, Pastor Wade. You can't, Pastor Wade, if you tell me that, I am not receiving it. I cannot spend four hours in the Word, studying the Word, learning the Word, causing the word to be set in me and you are telling you are trying to tell me that that is self that that is not of god that god's gonna reject that come on i'm gonna stop coming on to fourth watch because you have lost it i'm telling you people of god we get tricked by satan we can easily be tricked by Satan, because not all of us are, but we can easily be tricked by Satan into thinking that if we spend five hours praying, if we spend six hours speaking in tongues, if we spend four hours um, in, in the word of God, that we are doing exactly what God wants and God is pleased with that. But if you spend four hours praying and your children are hungry, your children are crying, your children hate God because you spend no time with them, you have not set, spent a single sincere one hour with God and, and, and take care of your children. You spend uh, uh, four hours praying in tongues. And yes, you're charged up and you feel powerful. But when your husband come home from work, when your children come home from school, uh, there is no food. Uh, there is no preparation. Uh, nothing else was done more than charging the atmosphere with the Spirit of God. Uh, and they are crying out to God saying, God, where is my mother? Where is is my wife what have you done why have you taken them you have that responsibility and God does not receive what you have given as fully relational because God gave up himself for others and you are only giving up yourself for God so it's self you are looking to spend so much time with God that God it, it becomes one with you and that's fine Nothing is wrong with it, and that's why we get fooled. That's why we get fooled, because nothing is wrong with spending time with God. Nothing. I would never dare say that, and that's not what I'm implying. I'm saying that we have to, we have to find balance. And so if you're spending time with God at the expense of things that God has given you responsibility for, then you're missing the boat. If I spend all day reading the word, praying, reading the word, praying, reading the word, praying, and my wife is crying out in a corner saying, God, where is my husband? God, you gave me a husband, but I can't find him. He's always with you. What's going on? God's not going to be happy with me because someone is crying out that I am hurting them. Remember, we must be one with God, but we must carry out his assignments. Trust means that we want to grow in him. Obedience means that we must do what he says. Trust means that we must trust him and desire to be one with him. Obedience means that in that trust, in that oneness, in that unification with him, 
we must allow others to see our good works. Our children must not hate God because we beat them with God. Our husbands, our wives must not despise our Christian walk, our Christian life because of how pharisaic, super, unreal, spiritual we are or become. And so let us be very mindful, very mindful people of God, very mindful that we could do so many things that seem spiritual to man, but is a stench in the nostril of the Lord. So many, so many things. You know, one of the things that I have discovered, and I've said it to some, some, some of my, my men, I'm going to say it publicly now, and maybe I won't ever say it again because it is so painful. It is so painful. It is a real thing that many people have uh, discovered, many people have seen, but it is unfortunate, it is sad, and it gives me no great pleasure to say it. Both men and women, but often, often more with women than men, just because of nature and character and how persons, how, how men operate as opposed to women. But what I have found in my research, just checking through different people, people I know personally and people I don't know that I know that well, that I'm watching from the far, from outside. I've noticed one very powerful thing. The deeper some persons get in God, the more time they spend in the Word, the more Word they know, the more they pray, the more God reveals things to them, the more they begin to hear from God, hear God's voice, see things of God is the harder they are to deal with in the natural. Is the harder they are to deal with in the natural. And that, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, is not of God. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Hear me carefully. The deeper we get in Jesus is supposed to be the easier we are to deal with. Are you hearing me? Be very mindful and careful, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The deeper you are in God is the easier it is that we should be. When we get deep in God, what I see, what I see in my own personal experience, I see people with less compassion, less forgiveness, more judgmental. I see people who compare even without knowing they're comparing. Because when someone says, how could this person do this? How could that person not see this? How could I, I hear persons preaching and because they have come to a place where they are flowing in discernment, they, they have sought God and God has given them this gift of discernment and they begin, they come on Facebook or they go on, on TikTok or YouTube or uh, Instagram or whatever or X and they are preaching and they are preaching and they and they're up on their high horse and they're saying y'all christians y'all need discernment y'all need to discern y'all don't have any discernment y'all need to get some discernment because you need to discern who is this and y'all need this listen if every christian could just go to price smart or woolworth or or or, or big Be big best buy or one of those or, or one of those big um, department stores in america or in jamaica and just go to the cashier and say sell me a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of of discernment if we could go and pick up discernment off the shelf don't you think every single christian would be walking in the full discernment why are you condemning people and letting them feel like they are no good like they are not christians because you are so spiritual because god has given you this gift of discernment do you know that discernment is a gift of the spirit the holy ghost got to give it to you you can't buy it you can't grab it you can't take it you got to seek God and God in his wisdom give it to you because there are some people who just if they if they started to discern discernment is discernment of spirits if some people begin to discern some demonic spirits that are functioning in the atmosphere
scared. They would drop down and die. They would run and become fearful. They would hide from God. They would even backslide in some instances. And so there's some other people who would judge people, who would see people and see some spirits operating in them and begin to isolate them, begin to talk against them. There's some people who are not mature enough to deal with discernments. And so there are some people that God give discernment as a gift before they were formed in their mother's womb. And some people seek God earnestly and get it. Some people have it and don't realize they have it because they have to learn and grow by God's design to recognize the value of discernment. And so it really irks me when people come and they, because of how, of how they are flowing, because of this good, awesome gift that God has given to them, they begin to chastise and chide and condemn other persons. Often, hear me carefully, in fairness to them, often un, un, unawares. They are doing Satan's work, often unawares. And so as we become more spiritual, as we become more intimate with God, our character and nature must be like him. When Jesus said to the disciples, you stiff-necked and hard-hearted people, you perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? He was saying to them, it's not what you should have that you don't. It's what I've given you that you have not received that's a different thing. Jesus was not chiding them for what they didn't have. He was chiding them for what they didn't receive. It's a big difference. If you are saying, Pastor Wade, how can you as a pastor not have this visionary gift of discernment? I remember when, 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 when my dear wife, awesome, wonderful woman of God, um, was, was coming up through the process. My wife got some gifts that she never had to fast and pray for. My wife have more gifts in her. Talents and abilities in her. Spiritual gifts I'm talking about now. Because the, the natural gifts can't be mentioned. They are so many. But she has some spiritual gifts. She will look at a building and see a snake wrapped around it. She will look at a building and see demons coming out of it. She will look at people and see certain things. And she used to, there, there was a time she used to torture me to the point where I felt like I wasn't a Christian because I don't have that gift. And so she would say, um, Rowan, look at that building, what you see? And I'm looking at the building and I see paint, purple, I see concrete, I see windows, and I'm seeing in the natural, the building. And she's saying, you don't see that serpent? And without even, she, she meant well, guys, believe me, I'm not talking about my wife in any, any negative way. I'm just telling you the example, the literal example of how we can become a, 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 a stench in God's nostril if we don't recognize and identify that what God has given to us, he doesn't necessarily give to everybody around you. He doesn't even necessarily give sometimes that thing to even leaders. And we often treat leaders with scant regard, disrespect, if they don't have the same gift as us. God has given you this gift so you can go be a pillar in the ministry. Instead, you go be a chainsaw. You go in the ministry and because the pastor doesn't see in the spirit like you. Oh, I, I can't listen to him because he doesn't see in the spirit. Doesn't he see that there's a witch in the church? The reason you see the witch is because God has placed you there to see the witch and to subdue that witch by the Spirit of God so the pastor can do what God has given that pastor anointing to do, to preach the word and to mature the people. You are the one that God showed the witch. You are the one that must deal with the witch. Why are you chastising and destroying the pastor's reputation? Touching everybody you can touch in the church and saying, you know, that's a witch and pastor don't see. I don't know. I don't know that this church is going to go far because pastor don't see. Another one over there because they can prophesy better than pastor. Oh, pastor only know a word. Pastor only know how to shepherd. But pastor can't bring a word of prophecy. Pastor can't prophesy. I don't know if I can sit under a pastor 
pastor who don't prophesy accurately, who can't tell the people what's going on. And so I'm going to destroy the church by taking people outside and prophesying to them. Rather than say, Pastor, let's team up. You preach the word and I bring the word to pass through the prophetic. Pastor, you teach the word and I deliver the people through the word. Pastor, you preach the word and I help you to love the people by praying for the sick. Pastor, you teach the word and I come together with you as two hands come together to clap, as two feet put together to walk, as two minds put together to think and, and praise God, as two eyes come together to see clearly, as two ears come together to hear. I want to join with you, Pastor. I want to make God's kingdom powerful instead with tearing down. Oh, I'm hearing better out of my right ear than my left. The left ear ain't getting enough information. The left ear is not hearing good. Oh, left ear, you are not good. Oh, left ear, you are sad. Oh, left ear, you don't make it. Oh, instead of saying, God, clear up my left ear so that the both can hear with the same power and accuracy. And so we must be mindful and careful people of God that we don't become so anointed, we don't become so powerful in God that we become a weapon for Satan instead of an instrument of reconciliation for God. When God make us powerful, he makes us powerful that we might draw men unto him, not repel them. The moment people begin to be afraid of your anointing, the moment people begin to stay far from you because of you, then the God that you are serving is the God of self or Satan. Every time you get with other people, they are supposed to be excited to be around you. Because as someone just typed, iron must sharpen iron. Don't always think that because someone is dull, and hard that you don't want to be around them because they can't sharpen you it doesn't take a sharp knife to sharpen another sharp knife all it takes is material that is similar you are sharp already as you rub against the one that is dull that one that is dull becomes sharp but the truth is the dull metal rubbing against the sharp metal doesn't dull the sharp metal it keeps it sharp but the sharp metal sharpens the dull metal amen so if you have a, a piece of steel bar and you keep rubbing a knife against it rubbing a knife against it the knife will not get dull the rigidness of the of the steel will continue to sharpen the sharp knife but the sharp knife will now begin to sharpen the steel so the steel couldn't cut before, but as the sharp one, as the one full of the word, as the one full of the anointing, as the one full of the prophetic gifting, as the one with the apostolic call and the office, as the one with the evangelistic ma ma um, ministry, begins to rub against the other, begins to rub against the other, because the metal is all you need. It doesn't need to be sharp yet, but you have to sharpen it. That's God's call for us, that as we come together, we don't throw out anything and say, oh, you are not a knife, therefore you can't mix. You must say, oh, you are metal, therefore you can be sharpened. Come on. And so I, 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 I cry out to you this morning with everything that is in me. And I say, let us be careful. Let us be mindful because many of us, us, and I say us, not, 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 not um, just token. Because I've seen where I have had to say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me, please help me. To be a reflection of you and not a reflection of self. A reflection of you God we have to check ourselves on a regular basis how do I speak how do I speak what do I say when I come in possession when I come in 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 in, um, in contact with sinners when I hear on television people doing certain th things how do I respond do I respond from the heart of God or do I respond by where God has me do I respond as, oh my goodness, how could you do that? How could you do that? As if I never did anything like that when I 
was not fully matured or maturing or more mature in God. The moment we, we think or say, how could you do that? You're saying that the person is well beyond that, knows they shouldn't, and still did it out of rebellion, hardness of heart, or wicked. That's not necessarily so. The person could just be at the place where you once were before God took you to the place where you now are. When we see someone in a bad place, that's not someone to talk about, that's someone to talk to. Can I say that again? When we see someone in a bad place, regardless of what that is, regardless of what that is, fornication, adultery, lying, sexual immorality of any and every kind, come on, lack of, of focus in God, they're Christians but they're not praying, not reading the word, always depressed, always talking about demonic oppression and demons and all these things and it's so frustrating to hear a child of God, a believer, always only focusing and talking about demons. They are not people for you to talk about but people for you to talk to. They are iron but they need to be sharpened. They are iron. They belong in the kingdom. They are iron. God has made them iron and they are in the kingdom, but they are dull. They can't cut down the demonic forces coming against them. They can't cut down the gossip. They don't know how to cut down the trees of pride. They don't know how to cut down the trees of bad word cussing and anger and frustration and rejection. They don't know how to cut them down, but they are iron. And what they need is not someone walking around saying, look at her, look at Joan Jones, look what she's doing. Look how, how she, she says she's a Christian and look at that. She don't, she don't need somebody talking about her. She needs somebody talking to her because in order to sharpen her, you got to get close to her. You got to serve her before you can influence her. Before you can talk about what she's doing, you got to earn her trust as a solid knife that continually sharpens her. And so please, people of God, if you find yourself talking about other believers more than talking to other believers, then you are a wrong piece of metal, roaming against a wrong piece of metal, and therefore none will be sharpened or in other words you might be a round piece of metal rubbing against wood because if you find someone that will gossip with you that will talk with you about I'm not a Christian then one of you definitely is not iron because no one can be sharpened from gossip no one can be sharpened from talking about other people no one can be sharpened from destroying another believer no one can be sharpened from being disobedient to the word of God. And so it would not be iron and iron. It would be iron and wood. It would be iron and water. Iron and fire. But not iron and iron. Amen. And so these are just some, some of the many ways Satan infiltrates. And he says, don't you see you are more mature? Don't you see you are more anointed than your pastor, than your husband, than your friends, than everybody in this prayer group? When you pray, everybody compliment you. When they pray, everybody is quiet. And you begin to get pompous. And the hot air from Satan begins to go up your rear, your rear end. Pardon the expression and the graphic nature of that. I apologize sincerely. The hot air of Satan begins to blow. <sighs> The helium and as helium gets into our lives we become like a gas balloon like a hot air balloon and what happens to a hot air balloon when it's filled with hot air we begin to float and when you're floating you get higher than everyone else and in order to communicate you have to look down at everyone else are you getting the analogy and the moment you begin to look down at people the moment you begin to see people from the vantage point of God, but you are not God. And you don't have the character and nature of God. It means that you have been elevated by Satan. And if you've been elevated by Satan, you'll talk down to people. You'll talk at people or about people instead of to people. You'll hold down instead of lift up. You'll destroy instead of reconcile. 
if you see your life going in that direction, if you see that every time you see something wrong, you choose to talk about it rather than talk to it, then you're on the way to being completely deceived. And you and I should stop and rethink. That's one of the reasons why today I try to speak so much less. My wife, my wife sometimes will think that I am being disrespectful. No, I love my wife dearly. I'm not just saying this on air. I love my wife, but sometimes when she speaks, I will, she will hear, she will not hear me say anything. You would think that I'm mad at her. I'm not, but sometimes she will say something genuine, sincere, from a clean, clear place. Because my my wife have a heart that sometimes I have to try and keep that in check because it is so good, so wonderful, so loving and kind. But just out of nature, just out of character, just out of uh, 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 the world system, just out of things and issues, she sometimes will say something. And because I know it's not coming from any bad place, all I do is just keep quiet. Because sometimes you must know that if you cannot speak to something, there's no need to speak about that thing. Everything God wants to speak into. Every life God wants to speak into not speak about god wants to speak into the ukraine situation god wants to speak into the the, the, the um, israeli hamas situation god wants to speak into the haiti situation god doesn't need to hear our voice saying boy haiti has been steeped in witchcraft and haiti get caused this on themselves and haiti the haitian people deserve what they're getting and the haitian people deserve the thing there because they are wicked and they are gang they are run by gangs and they have been corrupt and that god knows all of that what are you speaking to in it it's easy to speak about it anyone can speak about it satan is always speaking about people and things and nations always speaking about us that's why you have word curses when you're speaking about something 90 percent of the time you're cursing it word curse but when you're speaking to it hallelujah as a believer from the heart of god you're fixing it you're helping it and sometimes speaking to it may hurt you know if someone tells me rowan your eyes are red and I thought my eyes were black and I'm looking and seeing black eyes and the person is telling me my eyes are red. I may be hurt. I may be offended. But they're saying, Rowan, you're looking in the natural and seeing black eyes. But I'm seeing red eyes because red eyes means I am saying and doing some things, even from the pulpit, that is not of God. I'm hurting people. I'm prophesying in a way that is destructive rather than constructive. I'm destroying rather than reconciling. That's a red eye kind of action. And so when someone says your eyes are red, it may hurt because you think you're doing what God has said. Oh, I'm prophesying as the Lord lead. No, you're not. You're prophesying as self lead. God gives you instruction and self takeover and is doing it in a way that is destructive to people. That's not God. And when we behave like that, people of God, hear me carefully. When we use the Bible saying that we're telling people about Jesus and we want them to change. We want our family members, our children to change. And so we beat them over the head. Three times a day our children must be in the word. They must read the word even more than they read academic books. Because God is more important than academics, than education. So three times a day you must read the word. You must learn everything and you must. And they become frustrated and annoyed. And they hate the Bible and hate God. And you say, oh, I'm doing the right thing. No, you're not. You're destroying rather than reconciling. Ask God for the wisdom to impart his will and his ways to people in general, but especially to your family. Especially to your family. God must not be a stench in the nostril of anyone because of us. People of God, hear me. Hear me. God must not be a stench in the nostril of our co workers, our family, our neighbors our church brothers and sisters because of us because that would not be God it would be self 
And if we continue like that, we're going to think that we're going to be with him in paradise. But all we will hear is, is depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Because my two laws that I gave to you through my son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is to love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And what you didn't want for yourself, I expected that you would not give it to others. And because you did, that means you were not a reflection of me, and so depart from me. Amen. Hallelujah. Painful and tough, but it's self-examination day. Like a woman checking, self-examining to make sure there are no lumps in her breasts. Come on. Hallelujah. We must examine ourselves this morning in a deep way because God is in that kind of mood where he's saying, you look like a Christian to everyone. You sound like a man of God, a woman of God to everyone. But to me, you're a clanging cymbal and a tinkling bell. You have no love. You have no grace. You have no mercy. You're not of me. We have to be mindful and check ourselves. Check ourselves for that cancer. Check ourselves for that lump of self. That lump of pride. Check ourselves. Come on. We have to check ourselves. Our lymph node. Check our, 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 our tonsils. Check our appendix. To see if there is any kind of swelling. Anything that is happening on the inside of us. That is not, eat, that not visible. To those on the outside. Check our souls. To see if our souls. Are more into. Doing God's work. Than our spirit. If we're living out of our soul, even as a Christian, we have not gotten it right. We must always be led by the Spirit. Always be led by the Spirit. And so people of God, please, please, I'm begging you, even as I'm begging myself, let us check ourselves constantly. Let us be thinking, how am I thinking about this person? What am I saying about this person or this thing or this situation? What am I thinking about this war and all these innocent women and children that are dying? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Or what am I speaking? Am I talking about it or am I speaking into it? It's one thing to say, my God, my God, look what Israel is doing. This cannot be of God. This is wicked. All these children dying, all these women dying. This is wicked. I can take you into scripture where a king lost his throne. A king lost his throne. A man called Saul lost his throne because he didn't complete the assignment that God gave him against Agog and his people. God told him to wipe out the entire nation down to the animals. Yes, you can go into theology, a theological discourse and say, well, boy, you know, through Jesus, these things should not happen again and, and, and that it's not the same dispensation. I'm not talking about the theology of it or the dispensation of it. I'm talking about the fact that we can never, ever, ever, ever know the extent of what God will order somebody to do. God has never received the human sacrifice from the beginning to the end of time. And I can tell you, God will never accept a human sacrifice because the one human sacrifice that God wanted, he's the one that gave it. He gave his only begotten son and he became a sacrifice for us that no human being could ever be sacrificed again. Amen. But yet still, yet still, God told Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac. God called David a man after his own heart. When we look at the things that David did, we, we often would challenge and say, no man, that must be a misprint. 
somebody wrote that wrong somebody injected that maybe the persons who were writing the bible that loved david and they wrote that in there that god called him a man after his own heart because that's not possible these things that david did god would not do them we can never know the full function of god's heart and god's mind never None of us possess the ability and capability, even with the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We can never know the fullness of God. And so there are things that God could sanction, could allow to happen for reasons beyond our comprehension. And so instead of speaking about something that we don't know the full mind of God concerning, let's speak to it. Let's speak God's grace. Let's speak God's power. Let's speak God's love. Let's speak God's heart. Let's speak God's mind. Let's speak what we sense from the word God would do and be. And let God be the final arbiter, the final judge on what it is that is happening. All our job is not to condemn, not to judge, not to destroy, not to talk about, but to speak to. Father, I speak your peace over, over Haiti. Lord, some people say this, some people say that, but I'm saying bless Haiti, cover Haiti, restore Haiti, del deliver Haiti from witchcraft, deliver Haiti from gangsterism, deliver Haiti from crime and violence, deliver, deliver Haiti from rape, deliver Haiti from sexual immorality, deliver Haiti from idols and false gods. Father, I come in agreement with those people those 50 righteous people that are in Haiti praying and declaring and praying and declaring and praying and declaring father I come in agreement with them and I say God Haiti shall not die Haiti shall recover Haiti shall be restored Haiti shall be a jewel again in the Caribbean before you come I declare that Haiti shall be renewed and restored and what was plundered and stolen from Haiti God I thank you that like David we they will they will pursue overtake and recover all I declare that Haiti Haiti shall be a nation again that shows the spoils of war. Haiti shall be a nation again that flourishes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because it's easy to speak against Haiti. Easy. But to speak into Haiti's situation requires compassion, requires an unconditional love that allows you to look past the weaknesses, the failings the flaws, the nastiness, the wickedness, all the things that are happening through some people because there are many righteous in Haiti. Many. It's just that they are more wicked. So the more wicked is showing wickedness and the wickedness is coming up as a stench in our nostril, not God's. Our nostril. God is only smelling what the righteous people are sending up because they are always praying for their nation. And so don't look at the things in your family and say, my goodness, my family doesn't have anybody that get married and stay married. My family doesn't have anybody that gets married. My family doesn't have anybody that is wealthy. Poverty is our lot. Hand to mouth living is our lot in my family. No, that's speaking about what Satan has already done in your family. Your, your words must be words of life. Your words must be let there be light. Let there be life. Let there be blessing. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be a change. Let every generational curse be broken. Let generational blessing come upon my family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak to the situation in my family and I cancel every assignment of the enemy. I cancel every demonic activity, every witch and warlock that has come down the bloodline of my generation, that has caused my generation to be cursed. I speak to it now. I reverse every curse and I cancel every assignment. I declare that my family is blessed. Chill doctors and lawyers, mighty men and women of God, come out of my family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The children in my family are brilliant. All my nieces and nephews, my aunts, uncles, cousins, they are brilliant. They are people of God. They are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Even when your family is the worst in the community, what you say is what counts. Don't join others to speak about your family. Join God and speak in to your family is somebody hearing me this morning 
because this was not on the cards i have my scriptures and everything planned out but god is saying i need some people that will recognize that their focus is incorrect that they need to focus on what i am focusing on and not what self to become a self-life to become a self-life because if we begin to function as a self-life we will become a shelf life God will put us on the shelf. On Sunday, we did a scripture from Esther. And Mordecai said to Esther, Who is to tell that you did not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Uh, I will, listen to me, people of God. Unless our lives are reflecting something different, something contrary to what Satan is doing in the general population, unless our life is reflecting a different light, a brighter light, not one obscured by a, a red film or a yellow film or a green film that creates a pretty light but not a light that men can see properly to come to God. Our light must be white and bright that men can see whether day or night. And so self must always die. Self of, of how much word you know. Be careful of people who keep saying, I, I, I. I spent five hours in the word. I spent four hours praying. I preached a powerful message on the weekend. I prayed for the sick and they recovered. I pray for this lady and she and she was delivered. Be careful of people who are constantly in that language of I, I, I. Because they are speaking about themselves instead of to themselves. Lord, I speak to myself, Ruan Eastern Wade, and I say, Father, may my self-life become a shelf life and my real life become the life that is a knife that cuts through the works of Satan, that cuts through the works of pride, that cuts through the works of greed, that cuts through the works of lust. May my life be a sweet incense in your nostril and a joy to the people I encounter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every day we got to pray and ask God, God, to help us that as we grow in him we do not grow away from people but grow with people God does not want to elevate us out of the stratosphere of people he doesn't need us in heaven not yet he need us in the earth but we must be a life that is so powerful so enriched that others will see us and say I want to be like him i want to be like her is anyone saying they want to be like you at the moment if not let's pray again father make me a vessel that people desire to drink from make me a wine that people say wow this is good wine make me an oil that people want on them make me a mantle that person say i want a double portion of that Make me a soul that is under control of the spirit of the living God that others may see and say, Ha, ah, truly God is with this person. Amen. That must be our prayer so that we will never be a stench in God's nostril and we will never hear, O oh man of God, you thought you were doing what was right in my sight, but you were on the devil's plight. So leave my sight, for I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. He who have ears to hear, let him hear, including mine. Amen. Father, we pray this morning for your blessing upon us. We pray this morning for your revelation to us. We pray, God, that this word will not just touch us this morning, but leave from our minds by later today. Father, may we be so convicted that we might be converted, that we might be reconciled from the place of self, that we might not be placed on Satan's shelf to be used by him whenever, wherever, and however he wants. Father, teach us how to speak to situations instead of about situations. Teach us how to speak to our own selves as David did when he said, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope thou in God. May we speak even to ourselves like David, O God, to encourage ourselves, 
to motivate ourselves to speak against the thing in ourselves that would condemn ourselves contaminate ourselves but may we declare oh mind you are the mind of Christ oh heart you are the heart of God oh peace you are the peace of God that passeth all understanding reign and rule in me oh joy of Rowan Wade you are the joy of the Lord and you are strong because the joy of the Lord is in you oh self die and let spirit live my spirit man stands strong my spirit man can do all things through Christ who gives me strength my spirit man leads me and not my self life my flesh must decrease and Lord my spirit increase in the name of Jesus Christ we have to practice to speak to ourselves so that others may see us and not see self but see God when the 52 soldiers came when the, the 102 soldiers came that were burnt up by fire they weren't burnt up because they didn't see God in Elijah they were burnt up because of the assignment that they came on but they saw God we can see God but because of our assignment we get burnt up what is your assignment people of God what is your assignment is your assignment to reflect God or is your assignment to only see God the soldier says oh mighty man of God come down the king requires you they didn't do anything wrong they saw God and they even acknowledged the mighty man of God they saw the man of God they saw God in the man they knew he was powerful and mighty through God but they reaped a bad response because of the assignment the mission the motive that they came with what is your motives people of God what is your motive what is your motive for praying for a husband what is your motive for praying for financial breakthrough what is your motive for wanting power in God what's your motive for wanting to learn the word is it to preach and let people adore you and say wow because there's a man that spoke eloquently one called Herod spoke eloquently beyond the imagination of humans and they say wow what a speech this man must be a god and he didn't give god the credit and an angel struck him and immediately he died and worms ate him he didn't have time to decompose worms ate him immediately are we studying the word so that we can be eloquent and be admired by men or are we studying the word that we might win souls for the kingdom of God that we might be transformed and our minds renewed that we might see things through the lens of Christ what is our motive because seeing God is not enough being in God by God and for God is what is required amen amen hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I hope that this that didn't discourage anyone um, I hope that you received that in the way that God meant it it wasn't planned hallelujah but God is faithful amen so please he who have ears to hear let him hear glory to God um, you know certain certain persons who love me like sister Angela and, and pastor Marsha are always saying don't apologize for when you speak God's word when you speak um, but you know I am I am I'm not a prophet like them I am a pastor who sometimes prophesy 
I know my place, I know my role, I know God uh, has not told me that he has called me to the office of prophet. The office of prophet never apologizes, the office of prophet speaks the truth of God's word, um, rhema or logos, and they just walk off with it. If you're upset with the truth, said in love, then that's fine. A pastor is always trying to keep the sheet nice and keep the sheet. He will, he will, a true pastor does not contaminate the word or water down the word. That's not it. He will speak the word, but he will always be saying, okay, you're all right. The word beat you and cause a little hurt in your ribs. And the pastor will come with a little um, tiger balm or whatever it is for the pain and rubbing it on because he now knows that he has to shepherd you back to life, back to health even though he's the one that hurt you. And I take that from the sheep, from the shepherd's um, uh, uh, experience. The shepherd has a rod and a staff. The rod is the piece of stick that just comes all the way up to the top like what Moses had. But the staff is that another, another piece of stick but has a hook on the end, a hook at the end like this. So it's a long piece of stick with a hook at the end. That piece of stick, the staff, is to pull the sheep back from any place of danger to hook them and pull them back but the rod is a weapon the rod beat off prey um things that wants to attack lion and bears and all these things but one thing that the rod is also used for hear me carefully people of god don't forget this one thing that the rod in god's hand and in the hand of his pastors are also used for is to break the leg of the sheep because when a sheep is rebellious, when a sheep is rebellious and constantly being relocated, because rebellion also means relocation, a rebellious sheep is always being relocated and is in danger. What the shepherd does is he hits the sheep with, this, with the, the rod and breaks his leg. And then after his leg is broken, now just imagine, just imagine, just think for a moment with me. Go for 10 seconds in your mind. You're passing a, 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 a pasture. You're passing a, passing a pasture and you see uh, um, the edge, but you don't see the cliff because where you are, the cliff is at the end of the pasture. And you see a sheep running towards the, the end of the pasture. It looks like one plain flat piece of land to you but you see the shepherd chasing after the sheep and the shepherd takes the, the rod and hits the sheep whop, on his leg. Just imagine, you know, think of it like a movie. Just go with me for a few seconds. And you see the sheep, the shepherd take the rod and hit the sheep crack eye on his back leg and breaks it. And the sheep begins to cry ah, 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 and is rolling on the ground in pain. And you are in your car or you're standing at the fence looking at this. Tell me the honest to God truth. What would you all think? Wouldn't you all think this is the wickedest person in the world? What a wicked man. You'd call the police. You'd call all kinds of people. Animal protection. Cruelty to animals. You'd call. Maybe some of you would fall down on your knees and say, God, kill him. Kill him, God. Vengeance, God. Mash him up, God. Most of us. Most of us, including myself, if I saw that without the vantage point of God, I would be, hey, maybe I would jump over the fence and rush him. And when I'm almost near to him, I realize he still has the rod in his hand and I'd stop and say, all right, boss, you win. <laughs> but from our vantage point, we would see that as evil. Talk truth. Come on now. Talk the truth. It's okay. Don't be ashamed to speak truth. We would think he's wicked. But he's been trying to get this rebellious sheep to stop running to the edge of the cliff for the longest while and he refuses to do it. And so in order to save his life, the shepherd has to break his leg. The shepherd has to break his leg. But from where we sit, we see what he's doing as wicked when what he's doing is exactly what God has to do to some of us has to break our leg that we, our lives can be saved. I would rather lose a leg than lose my life. I would rather lose my leg to Jesus, that is. I would rather my leg be broken by Jesus than for Satan to have my life with him in hell. 
And so what happens, to give you the fullness of the story, is that after the leg is broken, the same shepherd has to now restore that sheep. And what happens, as I heard um, from, from, from the writings, that the, sh the shepherd now has to carry that sheep. And usually it's a, it's a baby, baby, a young sheep. He has to carry that sheep around his neck everywhere that he goes. So when he's going with the others, the, 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 the dogs and other, um, maybe if he has any other assistant, but he carried this broken leg one. He fixed the leg and carries that sheep around his neck. And it is said that as he carries this sheep during the time of the hurt, the sheep becomes a bonds with the shepherd. The smell, the feeling, the intimacy, the fact that he has to take him off and feed him personally, rub him, caress him. Come on. That sheep bonds with the shepherd in such a way that when his foot heals and the shepherd puts him back in the flock, that sheep stays close. That sheep doesn't remember the broken leg and says, bah, you wicked, you wicked, you wicked, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. The sheep bonds with the shepherd and says, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you for saving my life. Because the word of God says, he who has been forgiven much, loves much. In other words, he who has been saved from much, recognizes and loves much. Pastor Marsha loves God with all of her heart. You know why? Because a day when she was about to be completely humiliated and destroyed, she said, I mere your God. I mere your God. You could have completely allowed me to be destroyed. You could have allowed me to be destroyed. But you placed me. You broke my leg in the spirit. Left me in this hospital room. That I could recognize that I was killing my own self. We have to see through the lens of God that we are friends of God God sometimes put us in situations not because he hates us not because we are being punished but he because he wants to save us he wants to save us he's a good shepherd let us bond more with him when we feel like he has forgotten us when we feel like he has hit us in the knee or in the head, or in the bank account, or in the relationship. Because just maybe there was a cliff pretty close that if we fell over, everything would be over. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just a different perspective for us to examine and for us to grow and learn from by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you too. Um, prophetess. Prophetess Isabel. Prophetess Isabel, God bless you. God bless you. I celebrate you. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just um, start a passage? Uh, the Lord laid on my heart this passage um, under the title we don't have a lot of time left but I would love to start it and then tomorrow morning we can pick up um, because God wanted to encourage us this morning and sometimes uh, what my my dear evangelist Raquel calls calls bulla or um, or big dumpling hard to swallow is necessary uh, because it represents that hit in the knee or in the ankle by the rod but it is not designed to hurt us, even though it hurt. Even though it hurts. Come on, we're not, we're, we're not living fantasy life. We know it hurts. But it is not designed to destroy us, but to restore us. To save us from a greater level of pain. So it's better our ankle or our knee hurt than our entire body. Amen? So I beg you, please get that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Shireen. 
Sister Sherry Newton Reed on Facebook says, Eye opening perspective, Pastor. Hallelujah. Someone um, good as good as I on um, on Instagram says, I needed this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, someone on TikTok, uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Bowl says, Thank you, Pastor. I needed this word. Hallelujah. And so I, I know it's God. Guys, this was not me. I can't take any credit. Don't give me any credit. God, I had my plan. God just and did his thing because he loves us so much. He loves us so much and he wants us to be focused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So please encourage after we are finished this morning, encourage others to watch people who you know that needs to be sharpened, needs to be, be, be educated, needs to come into a place of recognizing that even their anointing is causing a self-life to come up and they are living a shelf life instead of a spirit life. And so you can send it, share it with others today so that they can recognize and become wise and operate as God's prize instead of walking around like Satan's friends just making noise. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Okay, so what we want to start today and hopefully finish tomorrow is um, a topic called access to life and godliness. Access to life and godliness. Now, we basically did a lot of that today. The things that we spoke about were things that if we, like for example, don't speak about but speak into, speak to. Don't speak about but speak to. That is access to life and godliness. Life and godliness for us because we would be demonstrating the godliness of God and godliness demonstrated to the situation or to the person whether it be a country as in the demonstration i gave concerning haiti and how to pray for haiti or for a person an individual and so to access life and godliness we must access the truth of god we must access the presence of god and we must function as god wants us to function so that we can access life and godliness amen so that's um part one today is part one of access to life and godliness so let's see if we can get to a verse or two before we are completely out of time turn with me in your bibles to matthew matthew chapter 14 matthew chapter 14 <clears throat> and it's not a long um chapter considering that it is matthew most of the chapters in matthew are, are quite long but this one goes to um uh, verse 36 yeah it's 36 verses but we're not doing all of the verses we're starting from verse 13 matthew chapter 14 reading from verse 13 and the entire study hopefully that we can finish um, we'll go to verse 27. Not today. We, we certainly can't finish today. But um, hopefully by tomorrow, we'll get to verse 27. Amen? Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 13, says this. Father, hold on one second. Father, let your word go forth with fire and power. Let your word go forth uncontaminated, uninhibited, and inspired by your Holy Spirit. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Let only the Spirit of God bring revelation of the word of God. For you are the word, and the word is you, and the word is God. And so God, dominate even now in your word, by your word, for your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so I'm reading from the NIV version. Hallelujah. I just posted pics of the dead in Christ that have risen this year. Oh my God. Hey! <laughs> Someone says on TikTok says, I just posted pics of the dead in Christ that have risen this year. My God. I, I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's persons who died and people pray for them and God rose them from the dead but um i'm taking that to be a positive hallelujah good morning uh marie biles good morning god bless you god bless you and welcome we're at the bible study part of our devotion 
um, beginning today with part one. Hallelujah. So we're reading from Matthew chapter 14. Guys, if you're just coming on, I see a good morning, which means you're just coming on. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 13. And it says, here's the word of the Lord. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately. Now, what had happened is that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was the forerunner, the one who ushered in Christ, the one who baptized Christ, the one who said, make straight your path, for there comes one who is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to unlatch. Amen? So John is who told the world that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming and is here and that we should honor him and worship him. Amen? Hallelujah. So when Jesus heard that John was beheaded by Herod because of the flirtatious dancing of his, um, his girlfriend's uh, <laughs> daughter, he was saddened by this and he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place where he could just meditate and just um i guess not reflect on the life of john because jesus was more mature and advanced from that but he needed time to recognize that now that john was out of the way he now was the sole carrier of the light of the world the sole carrier john got a little piece to shine the way but not for man to see their way forward but for man to see jesus so john's light was the point to jesus jesus's light is the point to heaven the way to heaven for man amen so john's light was the point the light to guide men to jesus jesus's light is the guide men to heaven make sure you don't mix them up so jesus would have gone to a place to reflect and to say wow okay it's my time take a deep breath Ah, <sighs> okay, God, I can do this. I can do this. Yes, yes, yes. Eh, shata to koro boku shata ndara bahase keto makutu shikata torianda. Or maybe he was a little nervous because this was the big assignment, and he was saying, "Ah, oh God, strengthen me, Father. Strengthen me, Father. Pour more strength into me. Glorify yourself in me, Father. Glorify yourself in me, because this is a big job. I see what they do to John. I see how John used to live. Ah, uh, God, I'm not so sure if I can manage that out in the wilderness in the sun." and I certainly can't manage eating wild locusts and wild honey I, God I'm not sure I can manage that daddy hallelujah it may have been that but Lord you know we're just having fun right no disrespect intended glory to God we have so much honor and respect for Jesus but I'm just saying to you he still was human and in the garden of Gethsemane when he said uh, if it be your will let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done it showed that he had human responses to some of the things that he went through. So don't think it's far-fetched, even though I'm just, um, you know, having a little fun with Jesus. Um, it, it, it still is not far-fetched that when he pulled away, he could be thinking about the task that he's about to take on and could be saying, Lord, these people are so difficult to deal with. Uh, give me strength to deal with them. Amen? Hallelujah. Because pastoring people is not easy, not by a long shot. Glory to God. So he pulled away to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him. You see it? He's trying to get a little solita solitary confinement, a little solitude, a little place of, of just peace away from people. But they still, hallelujah, followed when they heard. They followed him on foot from the towns. When you are called to be like Christ, people will find you when you want to sleep. They'll call you at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, wanting your help. Don't get mad at them. Don't talk about them and say, my goodness, they have no conscience. They have no, 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 no little respect for, for private time, for family time. I'm a married man. I'm a married woman. I need my time with my family. That's not their job to do. It's your job to manage, not their job to think and say because they didn't think and say that with Jesus. Jesus wanted to maybe go mourn a little bit for his friend or maybe go get himself in right alignment and right order in his mind for the task at hand, but they still were chasing after him. People who are in need, they are selfish. 
not wickedly selfish, but selfish because they want their problem solved. They want what you carry, what you have. And so please, I'm begging you, the more anointed you get is the less people are going to be considerate of any element of your natural life. They're going to want to pull from you constantly, pull from you constantly. Paul didn't have any natural life. And so he could preach from night till morning till somebody fell asleep and dropped and died. Paul could stay all night because he didn't have a wife to call him or WhatsApp him or text him and say, honey, you're not coming home. You cannot be giving these people all of your time. What about me? I need service too. I need to hear a word too. I need to be ministered to too. You got to come home now. Paul didn't have that. And so he could give all of him to the people. But you and I may not be able to. Right, Sister Raquel, you want to be married, so you want some time for your husband. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Denise, you want some time for your husband. But I'm saying to you that you have to carve that time. Don't think that people are going to give it to you. Don't be fooled. The more anointed you are, let me tell you this, if people are not stressing you, if people are not calling you and want more of your time, it's because you're not anointed. If people are not calling you and asking you for counsel, for advice, for opportunities for you to minister to them, calling you to come pray up their house, to come pray for them, pray with them. If people are not calling you, it's not because they are conscientious of your family or of your work or of things that you have to do. It's because they don't see you as anointed. Let me just set the record straight for you. The moment people see your anointing, see the love of God in you, see the glory of God upon you, they will not give you a moment's rest. So don't get it twisted and think that people are going to be conscientious and loving and kind and say, oh, she's married. Let me give her some time with her husband and her children. The devil is a liar. It's not going to happen. Don't ever think it. The more anointed you are is the less rest you're going to get. You have to take it. You have to be like Jesus and say, okay, door closed. Boom. Tomorrow I'll pick up again. I'm going to spend time with my father. I'm going to spend time with my family and with God. You have to do that. And the moment you expect people to be conscientious and to think about you, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to end up talking about God's people instead of speaking to God's people. And that's now when your anointing becomes endangered because your frustration about self and what self is not getting and the, the conscience that they're not having for self becomes a weapon against self somebody getting this somebody need to hear this come on anytime you're carrying a good thing whether it's money come on as in wealth and riches people are always going to want to be in your presence because they want from you if it's the great anointing and power of god people are going to come because they want some of what you have when people are not coming around you, it's because you have nothing let that soak. Amen? So they chased after Jesus because he had something. So even though his cousin had died, they were not even thinking about, oh, let him grieve. Let him grieve. Let him give him some time. Give him a few days to grieve. The devil is a liar. They're not giving you no time to grieve, people of God. They're still saying, yes, I know your cousin died and I know you're feeling sad right now, but I have this issue of blood. I have this issue of, of, of bent over for 18 years. I have this issue of a cousin who has cancer. I have this issue of my, my grandmother who is sick and dying. I have this issue of hypertension, diabetes, arthritis. I have this issue. I know, and I'm sorry about your cousin, but I have this issue. I told so korovoko shandara bahai. I know you said that you're, 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 you have to go get some counseling because your wife is upset with you because you haven't been spending time with her. Your husband is mad at you because you've been spending more time with the people of God than with your family. And, and, and I know that you, you, you want to go make it right, but I have this issue. I still need your help. I have this issue. And so don't be mad at people. Don't be mad at people when they are trying to solve their issue at your expense. You just have to be, by God's grace, like Jesus, and say, I know you have an issue, 
but I'll deal with your issue tomorrow. Now it's my family time. In an eight hour day, I have already given eight hours to the people. I need to give some time to my family now. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, you won't die. You've lived with this problem for years, weeks, months. One more day won't kill you. Tomorrow morning, first thing I'll minister to your, your, your situation. They will understand. They won't be happy, but they'll understand. And tomorrow morning when you minister to them and the anointing of God flows because your family is taken care of, your children are happy, husband gets sought out and properly a smile, all thing is good. Tomorrow morning when you minister to them, you minister at a high level because your family is in good stead. Your time with God was spent and you have received download. And so instead of spending two hours with one person ministering to them, you spend two minutes. Boom! And the glory of God comes because you put all things in proper perspective. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Everything must be in balance. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where am I? So let's just finish on 14 because I'm real out of time. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. So when Jesus, even in the midst of his pain, even in the midst of missing his cousin who was beheaded, he knew his assignment and he didn't have a wife to go home to. It wasn't time for him to go set aside and set apart and go pray. And so when he saw the people who came running after him, looking for him because they had an issue, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Amen. And so, we have access to life and godliness, but we have to chase after Jesus. Chase after him, because everything that we need for life and godliness is in him. Chase after him. And those who carry the life and godliness of Jesus, don't run away from the people. Don't talk about the people. Speak to the situation of the people with compassion and heal their sick. Sick of spirit, sick of soul, sick of body. Heal their sick because that's why we carry the presence of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that you were blessed. I hope that you were sufficiently encouraged. And I hope, by God's grace, you have been filled up with an anointing, with a word to your spirit this morning that will help you to become more like Christ as I desire to become like Christ, that we too might be a blessing to the people of God and while doing that, still be a sweet incense in the nostril of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for whom we work and live and move. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, communion time. Communion time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yesterday I went over way too long. I'm already over now. I don't want to go over as long today as yesterday. Hallelujah. Bless God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word of encouragement. Thank you, Lord, where we were hit in the ankle or in the ribs or in the, in the head. Oh God Almighty, we know that you, the Good Shepherd, will 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 patch up our wounds, will put medicine on us, medicine of, of the oil of the word, medicine of the oil of the spirit, medicine that will heal us, deliver us, set us free, and make us whole. But Lord, may everything that you said this morning be to our edification, exhortation, and comfort, to our strength, to our maturing and to our maturity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems that they may be to our bodies, health and strength, prosperity and good success. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Jacqueline says I'm to check the TikTok messages. Okay, Sister Jackie, I will. I will, I will, I will. Hallelujah. Thank you for, for putting up that message, Sister Jackie. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Even as we thank the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, I also have to thank you because without you, if it was just blank numbers, blank the zeros on the screens, it would not even be worth the time because we would only be preaching to angels and to the Lord. And he's the one preaching, so he doesn't need to preach to himself. And so we thank God for you and we give God praise and we ask that God will cover you, guard and keep you in all your ways and all your days as you continue to walk in faithfulness to him and to his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your hands for the blessing and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you. And we love the whole owner too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, have a fantastic day. And please remember... If you, if you want to have Jesus in your life, if you've been hearing these devotions and you figure, oh my God, I, I, excuse me, I really need to be a part of what God is doing in this season. We invite you to come and be with us to give your life to the Lord. If you do not have a church home and you want to start getting back into that place of, of, of meeting with persons and just feeling the love and being served and serving as well uh, we are located liberty for living ministries international we're located at 30 to 32 red hills road um, in the trade center just google it type it into your google maps and the map will lead you there whether by bus or by taxi or by your own car come we'll be happy to serve you we have, we have a team of leaders and leaders in training that will just love upon you man and make you feel like this is the best thing that you could ever do if you need jesus please come just indicate to us we will pray with you and pray for you so that you can start this journey of living your best life because only the life with jesus is the best life amen hallelujah so that's 30 to 32 red hills road liberty for living ministries international right, located right between radiant mutual and isra tech as you come into the trade center that's the trade home. Do we start at 8.30 on a Sunday morning? And for men, if you want to come and join us, we meet at 7.30 on a Thursday night at the same venue. For men, come on out and join us. If you want to just come talk to some men who just want a reason for the season. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. And there are many other things, but um, I'm well over my time. So we'll... Uh, talk about some of the other things another time amen god bless you have a great day remember to do something good for someone today go out of your way to be a blessing and you start by sharing this broadcast today with your friend family and friends so that they too can be blessed by what you were blessed by this morning in jesus name god bless you love you guys bye you are great